the Go Berserk with Email podcast with Navy nuclear engineer turned email software developer, Troy Broussard. So calm. I'm pissed off, but I'm telling this because I am teaching you how to think differently and how to test differently. So patient. And Ben, that's put a half a million dollars into this company too, is being told that nobody can find the goddamn bug. So charitable. I'm going to start paying bounties every time somebody finds a bug. We're going to deduct $10 that week. So trusting. Do not assume that anything works. Assume that nothing works. And so sweet. It makes sugar taste just like salt. I want to play into the sexiness of marketing automation, but I also want to slap the complexity of it. The Go Berserk with Email podcast begins now. All right, so I am going to reveal my ignorance and please, please, please don't judge me, but what is preview text anyways? (laughs) Preview text didn't exist in the early days of email marketing, but it has evolved. And preview text is the little teaser text that is displayed in your inbox when you see the title of the email and you see the first line of text underneath. You can pick that? You can actually pick what goes there? Yeah, as a marketer, you can actually designate what's going to go there in your copy of your email. And so it's become all the rage. It's become in vogue. And copywriters with their direct response thoughts really like to go crazy with how important the preview text is and all of that. So many platforms allow you to set the preview text for the email so that when it's sent out, you've got the title, you got the body, but you have this little preview text. Think of it as like a subtitle. And when the email shows up in Gmail or some other platforms, then it will be pulled in as the preview text that's shown in the browser. This becomes even more important when you're using a mobile phone to access the email, right, where you can control more of what's shown. It's one of these things that in theory, sounds really good, but I'm generally opposed to it. And the reason that I'm going to talk about this is that there was a a gentleman that did a review of Berserker Mail. And this was one of the kind of nitpicky things that he put in his review, that he didn't like the fact that we didn't have preview text and kind of, you know, slammed us for that. We probably will add it in to Berserker Mail. It's not very high up on the priority list, and you'll hear why as I talk to you about it. But I still probably will add it in. I think it has enough value to make sense. Some things we're just adamant about, Ben and I are both, if we're really adamant that this is not constructive to our platform, it doesn't get added. I don't care how many people want it. If it's something that we know is not going to be beneficial for where we want the platform to go, like images, it drives a lot of people nuts and they can go somewhere else. But the people that understand that what makes a sale is a relationship and building that trust and rapport and not some, you know, stupid little cat meme image that you put in there, understand and get it. And those that don't, don't. So that's something we'll never compromise on. Preview text, neither one of us have that same strong belief on. It's something that neither one of us use, neither one of us will use it, even if we add it into the platform. But it's also one of those things that I don't think it's detrimental to the platform. But I do think it can be detrimental to the entrepreneur, the user or cuss our end user. And and here's why. Unfortunately, what you find with preview text is that a lot of people end up not setting it correctly or not editing it. And I can tell that a lot of email platforms must like remember the preview text from the previous email and, and automatically put it in the next one because I've received numerous emails where the teaser line of the preview text has no bearing whatsoever on the topic of the text. I've also received preview text that's trying to, to lure me in with some promise or some little gimmicky you know, reference, and then you can't find it anywhere in the content. So it sets up a bad relationship when it goes wrong. And when it goes right, I would argue there's no need for it whatsoever anyway. Just write your first sentence as if it were preview text and it gets pulled into the preview and 
problem eliminated, right? So this is one of those things where I think people try to get too cutesy and too tricky and too hacky and, oh, this little thing. And uh, it's probably developed by some email platform just so they can add a new feature onto their feature list and, you know, cater to the featureitis of comparing our platform to your platform to whatever. It's one of the reasons we don't do comparisons on our website. You'll find that we don't compare ourselves to anybody else. And the reason is that that appeals to a feature shopper. It doesn't appeal to somebody that actually values their time. And as we've talked about in the last couple of episodes here on the podcast, and many people maybe want to, Troy, what are you talking about, about your value of time? Why are you talking about the one metric that matters? Why are you talking about highest and best use? All of this ties in to Berserker Mail. And it all ties into email marketing because email marketing is about building that list. And it's the relationship with that list. That is the highest and best use for your business. And so it's also about understanding what's the highest and best use of your time and realizing that the less time you spend writing email and the more time you spend focusing on your, your customers, the better off your business is going to be. That doesn't mean write less emails. That means spend less time when you write an email in the browser writing the email. Our platform is completely optimized for speed. Speed and effectiveness. That's what we're at. Speed and effectiveness. So one of the primary reasons, you could prove to me that images are the double delivery rate and we still wouldn't add them to the platform. Because the average person that's using images in their email spends between 37 and 46 minutes to write an email. What? It adds tremendous complexity, yes, because you have to resize the image, you have to find the image, you have to source it, you may have to make sure you have legal rights to even use the image, which most people don't even bother with. (laughs) Then you get drawn down the rabbit hole of, oh, I've got this image, I want to put my brand on it. So then they go off into Photoshop or something and add their little logo. Next thing you know, they've tweaked with it for 40 friggin' minutes. Then... When you add it into the browser, into the email platform, it's not trivial because then the email platform has their restrictions around images and, oh, it's too big and you got to resize it. And then you've got to do like the multi-column layout and you got to edit your copy to work in the little drag and drop browsers and all that horseshit. It adds massive complexity to the process of sending out an email with, in my opinion, zero benefit. Okay. So... We wouldn't even do it even if it improved deliverability. I would argue it doesn't, but it's kind of a moot point because from a relationship building standpoint, it doesn't do anything additive and it actually distracts away from that and it distracts away from the time. It only takes me about five minutes, sometimes seven minutes to do an email. And my emails are long, by the way. Like if you read my emails, sometimes they're 2,500 words long. I type 100 words a minute, I'm fast, I get them in, I get out and I move on, right? There's no way in hell you can do an email in five to seven minutes if you're dealing with images and all these complexities. And preview text just becomes one more thing you've got to do. It becomes one more thing on the checklist that you have to ensure is done rightly. Otherwise, it makes you look stupid. If you haven't done it correctly, it's just one more opportunity to make you look stupid. And so from our standpoint, it's just not even necessary because you can just write the first line of your email and do it. And honestly, I think it sets up a lot of possibility for deception, inadvertent, perhaps deception, either erroneously not replacing it or updating it, or just that it's deceptive because you feel so, you want to make it so cute and clever and markety and gimmicky that you don't even really reference it in the body of the of the content. And then it feels like a bait and switch kind of feeling. And that hurts the relationship, right? Does that make sense? Oh, yes. Yeah. So no payoff, because that's what I see. Now that I'm, I'm understanding how it works, I have seen it in my inbox. And when it doesn't match, there's no payoff and it crushes trust instantly. Yeah, and it absolutely flushes a trust right down the toilet. So, yeah, I'm not a big fan of it for all of those reasons. And I think in the end, it just adds more complexity into the process. Now, I can tell you that I'm not going to promise that we're going to add it. But if we add it, I can tell you that we'll also do it in an intelligent way, meaning that we'll probably check that it wasn't used before, that it's not duplicate preview text and things to that nature. We have a lot of innovative checks that we provide in the email sending experience. Like, for example, if you send out an email and it doesn't have a link, 
our system's going to warn you before that email goes out. And I call it the don't make me look stupid feature, right? Because how many times you get an email and then you get a follow-up five minutes, oh, sorry, forgot the link. And here's another, right? The oops email. So we try to avoid the oops and we design for that. Understanding that our platform is designed by marketers for marketers really constrains a lot of our features. And that mindset is what sets us apart from any one of the competition. And it's one of the reasons, not the only, but it's one of the reasons we don't even bother with feature comparison. Mic drop. Boom. (laughs) All right, man. I love it. I love it. I'm going to go play with it. We should probably go in deeper into that uh, feature comparison conversation in a future episode. So we'll cue that one up. Let's compare. All right. So that is a wrap for another Go Berserk with email show. Thank you, listeners, for tuning in. And thank you, Troy, for dropping some knowledge on us. To get a free Berserker Mail test drive with no credit card required, go to startmytestdrive.com. From there, you can play around inside the platform without pressure. Load up emails and campaigns to see how simple the interface is and get comfy with everything before deciding to join. That's startmytestdrive.com. This is the podcastfactory.com.